Yeah, hello everybody and welcome to the next episode of Peter Likes Cooking, our tutorial uh, how to build a Type 3 website from scratch based on a ready-made template that you might get from uh, several sources or maybe you did it on your own. Um, sorry for uh, being too late with this episode because actually we promised to do it in a weekly um, manner but we were not able to provide uh, something during the last two weeks because we had several things going on. Petra is, has become ill and she has to go to the hospital. Uh, and so uh, greetings to her um, and hope she will be getting better soon. Um, this is the uh, reason why I had to do a bit more of the stuff that she actually does. So I now know what she, how she important she actually is for our project. So. Um, this is why we were not able to provide too many uh, sessions uh, during the last two weeks. Um, still, we will go uh, further with the uh, uh, things we did in the last session. You, you may remember it was about um, partials. <laughs> Didn't remember myself. Um, about partials and about sections. And we wanted to go deeper into that. And um, maybe we could just step in immediately so you will see how this is going on. Okay, um, let's see what the goal is. You might remember this is uh, the um, template we bought from Template Monster, and um, we were trying to convert that into a Type of 3 ready made template. And I can promise you that um, I think at the end of the session it will look a bit more close to that. Uh, what we have in this template. Um, so I provided some other things beforehand and we'll do something together in the session. So let's see how this is currently looking. You may remember we had some sections uh, of the header um, and in a basic template, the main and the footer uh, sections that we already created. And as you can see, the um, font has slightly changed. And just to make sure that we did everything right, um, I will just switch to another view here and we go to the PHP Storm window now and as you can see we have this header transparent here and I created some basic TypeScript settings we added some of the layouts in here in the include CSX section uh, which has been provided by the site package that we actually created before and we added some of the stuff in the JavaScript section. So what I did is I just copied some of the files into uh, the different folders. There were, did, there were not too many changes we had to make because uh, the style section, for example, is containing images folders. The only difference was that there is an uppercase uh, I now and it was a lowercase case I. So the rest has been not uh, very much of a change. So we have images in here. We have all these uh, things uploaded and what I did is I just added the font family stuff to the import section of the CSS because this is easier than dealing with link and other things in the meta header so we can just easily put it in here and it will be fetching uh, the necessary font style and now we can just copy this part to the basic HTML template which that we created before just to see if it looks similar when we now upload that. And when you now go back to the Chrome window and do a reload, just had to wait maybe because what likes cooking, yeah. Just do a reload here. So as you can see, we have um, structure similar to uh, the original template here already. We have the um, text in here. We have all the right uh, fonts and the colors. And we have some sections in here. Um, there is some background image missing, which is not a big deal. Um, but uh, at least there seems to be enough available to create some other things in type of three now. So when we go back to this one, and switch back to the section view. 
you remember we have a combination of a template, a layout, and a partial. And we had some partials in the two columns uh, template that we already uh, called here, but maybe we can just put that to the basic template because in the basic template we will start to create the actual page. Just put in, in something here. Um, now let's see how we can uh, copy code to several sections and uh, if it's a section of the actual template or if you make it a partial or if you make it uh, a layout. So the basic idea is that the layout, which is available in here, tells the template which of the sections to render in which order. So actually you can could switch the layout and then maybe um, make that happen um, that uh, the layout switch will change the layout itself. So you can easily change um, the different uh, orders of the uh, template section. So what we do now is uh, we have to decide which of the parts of the real template go to uh, which of the parts of our structure within the top of three templates. So maybe we can just take a look at that, which is header transparent here. We decided to have um, three parts in the actual page, which is the header, the main content and the footer. But actually there are some more things down here. So for example, there is something which is a global mail form output. Don't know exactly what this will be doing, but we can just put that, for example, to the layout because this is just a simple HTML stuff which has not to be um, very dynamic. So we can just put it to the layout and it's, it will always be there. So let's do that now. Go to the basic layout. And it comes after the footer. So no big deal here. We have similar things here in a another area, which are still below the footer. And this is, for example, for the photo swipe gallery. So maybe we can just make another section, which is then rendered in a different part. So we will call that photo swipe. We have the footer, the main class, the header. And when we now go back to the basic template, we can add that here, for example. Can call that photo swipe gallery, or just gallery. Should be enough. Doesn't matter if it's a photo swipe gallery or not. So we have this one here. And when we go to the template section now, we will need that as a separate section too. The other sections we had in this place were just um, directly connected to the content columns that we have in the uh, backend layout. But in this case, this is another section which will be filled by maybe a plugin later on or whatever. So we can still have that here and call it section gallery of the template basic, but we don't have the TypeScript stuff here. Okay, so what we can do now is we can actually fill in all that stuff from the original template to these sections or to the layout, and then we can find out if there are repeating things that we then will, uh, will put to the um, partials. So, first let's copy the header to the header section. Maybe this is even better to not put that into the header section because I guess the header section will be more or less similar uh, throughout the whole page. So uh, this contains um, the logo, it contains um, the different navigation, uh, the main navigation and all these things in the upper uh, part. So when we can just take a look at it, this is th the actual header section. So 
when we go back to the PHP storm here, we can even make that not a section here. Uh, actually, we can make it a section here, but we can make it a partial here. Because then this will all be rendered based on a partial and not on a specific section that has to be in the template. So we will just have a code once and not redundant in all the different templates. So when we go back to the template, we won't need this here, but we can make it a partial. So we will have a name which should be similar to um, the stuff that you actually add in, uh, within this template. There might be more sections here. And this is an interesting thing. You can still have sections even in partials. So for example, this would be the default header, but we could still fill in another header if necessary later on. when we um, find out that there needs to be another header which is different to the original one. So what we do now is we just put the header code into that partial. And we can already upload that to the server. And we can keep that in here, but we should tell it that we will go for the default section. And we have to provide some arguments. You might remember that we had that when we created uh, the first partial during the last session. Just reformat the code to be on the safe side. Upload this. And maybe we, I will just close some of the other things here because we don't need them currently. It's just disturbing. So we have a template here, which is now not containing a header section anymore, but we can at least move the original thing to the header partial. I will just put it here so it will not be rendered currently but um, when we put it into the section again and we find a place where we want to render uh, the dynamic column which is called header within this header uh, then we can put it there. But currently I would just expect to have it render already the header section. Let's see if this is done correctly or if there's something missing. The section gallery does not exist. Yeah, okay. As you might remember in the last session I explained that you need uh, to take care of all the different names and um, stuff that you are actually tr uh, trying to render within your templates. If something is not available, you will get messages like that in the front end. So we have to, um, here's the render section gallery, but in the template, there is no section gallery. Uh, actually, there is gallery, but there's um, space too much. So now it should be working. takes a bit of time and as you can see we already have good food and all this stuff in here. Now we can do the same thing with uh, the other sections so go back to the original template copy that part which is the page content in here and we can back to go back to the template 
and this is the footer and this is the main section so we can just put it here move the original content out of the section for now but maybe we can put it um, back within this session today so same thing for the footer and of course for the gallery as down here okay just close it and since there is nothing with the TypeScript, we don't have to remove it here. So when we upload that, we should have a similar structure that we already saw before when we uploaded the full template. Yeah, so this is already working. And we can now take care of the different parts of these sections. I just have to activate the Chrome window again. Sorry, forgot that. So as you can see, this is um, the current output of the front end already. So we have all this HTML content in there and now we have to make that dynamic. And as you can see, I already created some pages in here and some uh, um, sub pages and other things so that we can actually simulate um, the original template, which is of course, not the structure that we will use for the web page later on, but uh, currently I want just want to show you how this is done. So we can just actually build the whole template um, within Type of 3 and then you will see how this is working. So now we can go to the menu, for example, which is a, a good thing for the data processing stuff, which is already um, used by the original site package. For example, we have some media files in here. We have a menu processor in here, which is then rendering something which is called main navigation. I prefer the lower camel case notation so that you don't have too long um, names with just a uh, lowercase so they can actually read it better. So we can now go to this data processing section and we have to change something because you saw actually that there is not just two levels but three so we need a little more one level more here um, don't know if we actually need spaces but it doesn't matter we can remove that later on so if you want to know more about data processing you can go to one of the videos of the sessions we did before uh, which was a specific session ab about data processing actually we did two about it so when you are interested in uh, the data processing stuff, um, take a look at these videos. And now we can just check out what we can do with this data processing stuff within our template. For example, when we go to the header section now and we just open it, you can see there's a navbar wrap and we have the navbar panels in here and we have even more navbar wraps and as you can see this she seems to be a drop down and this seems to be the actual navbar. So what we can do now is we can just take that navbar and put that into another partial. And since we might reuse that navigation partial, not just for the main navigation, we will do it with a section. Navigation. Maybe we can just. No, um, we can just do it here. And um, in this case, it makes sense to hand over all the stuff which is available because we just don't need um, only uh, the navigation. Um, variable but other things too so arguments would be 
all. So we removed the whole stuff from the um, navigation part here and we have a section main navigation so we have to create that now. And to do that, go to the partials, new file navigation. You cannot see that because these are additional windows which are not streamed, but I am just creating the file now. Okay, and to have that, we can go in here and we have all the navigation in here. And to see if everything is arriving, I know we, we just need to provide a section, sorry, forgot that. Section name is main navigation. We can reformat that too. And we can put a debug output into that section just to find out if everything is arriving here. Okay, let's check that in the front end. And it seems as if there is something available here. We have main navigation in here and within the main navigation we have several pages. This is elements for example. Elements should have children. Within the children there should be at least something here because there was, was more levels than just two. So I would expect to have some children in here children pages children pages layouts so actually we even need more levels because as you can see there is no I will just go to uh, the window without the cam and so you can see it better as you can see here are children in the um, section of the page and here are no children so we are uh, missing one level. So what we do now is we go to the TypeScript section and add another level. That's it. And that's the fun uh, fact about um, the menu processors because this is much easier than having to create all that stuff manually in TypeScript and, doing, uh, the, and dealing with all the different wraps and stuff like that. So I would expect it to provide another level now. Okay, takes a bit of time. So we have the main navigation up here. We have pages here, then there should be more pages within that, and there should be more children. Hmm. Maybe we have to clear the cache. As you can see, we switched the um, backend layout in the page um, module, so um, there's one column less, and now something is in the unused column. You can move elements from there, and you have an orange message. It's just a warning that there is something available on the page which would not be rendered within that layout. So let's check it now. There should be four levels.
children children yeah now we have everything we need okay so this was just to check uh, what is available we will get the main navigation we would get some files if there would uh, was uh, something uploaded to the media section of that page and we have the original page data um, and of course uh, there was a logo um, on top of that so w we cannot see that but we can see the debug output and now we can deal with that main navigation thing in the partial which will be the last thing that we will do in that session and um, in the next session we we'll refine that so I will go back to the PHP storm window and go back to the actual navigation and as you saw we have something in the main navigation section but there should be at least a condition that checks if there is something available before we render it condition main navigation and now we can just move the whole navigation part into the condition and we have several levels in here so as you can see we have the elements level and news and all this stuff this is level one And to render that, we can now go into a for loop. Each is main navigation. We render it as level one and we might want to use a position later on and of course this should be rendering only the links currently it's quite easy I will just move this the rest of this out of the section so it won't be rendered and we can make a debug output of the level one object that we are creating here because then we can see what we can put in here to just get what we want okay so let's see what happens here nothing happens here okay so we have something maybe oh of course there is no brace around the variable I can just show you what the actual error was when you have a variable here but what we are creating here of course does not need braces so this was the actual error So let's see if we get more items now. Yeah, of course. So we have the data in here. And as you can see, each of the items already has something in additional variables, which are not really fields of the actual page that we're running, but uh, something which is provided by the um, data processor. So we have pages here, which is the title. We have the link. We would have target if there would be one. Uh, we have active, current, and spacer, which can be are used to render classes and as you can see here for example is a class active so we can render that when the page is active 
So this is something we can do already in here. So we have level one link, level one title, and we can put a class in here. And we can do that with a condition. This is the inline notation of the of the view helpers. So as you can see we have no debug output anymore, of course. We have the link. And the link is just used in here. We you can just uh, use that. You don't need type link and stuff like that. We have a title and we can now use a condition. And the condition says if there is level one active, then active. And we can even add more of these. Maybe it's easier to write it like this then. Because we have current. And I will just put in another class here which is not used by the template actually but maybe we will use it later on. So this would be everything we need to get all the information if the page is active or not. And when you upload that to the page and re-render the page, I would expect some menu to be visible there. Yeah, we have elements, pages, news, recipes, shop, donate and contacts. But we will need a home page in addition. So this is something we can just create manually here because this can be done outside of the actual for loop and it doesn't have to be dynamic. We just do it like this. We took take a look at the menu now. There should be a home link in front of the rest of the menu. Yeah, it's here. Okay, so I will just give you another level and we will go on with the rest of the stuff in the next session, which will be next week. I think um, we will uh, be able to do that uh, because currently it's getting a bit better because I get used to all the stuff that we uh, uh, that I need to do because Petra is not available currently. So I'll think uh, next week will be uh, something where we can go into more details of these menu structures. Um, but I will just go, go for another loop here. Actually, we should check the whole. children section in here and then go to just to check if it's done correctly now we have some diff in there as well okay so but maybe this is something that we will do later on because this is um, a very special mega menu prod maybe we can just do the easy drop down here. So this is much easier to be done now. We will have 
this one and we need to put that into the li of course and the question here is not if we have the main navigation but if there is something like level one children and of course this will be level one children here as well and we will render it as level two maybe we can just make sure that we can distinguish between the several positions so this would be level one position and level two position currently we don't need it but maybe we will need it later on so we can still put this in here and whatever we don't need the home of course but we can have at least some additional classes even though they are not used in the at that template but um, it does still doesn't make sense to provide information about active current and uh, the level so this should be enough and if I take a look at this one here it should be working already we just have to change level 2 in here okay so upload that to the server and now we can check that and there should be some sub menu items already as you can see magically there appeared some items in here and the pages are already available here cool so um, this will be the end of the session for today I hope you learned something about the partial and section stuff we will get deeper into that when we have more menus and other things rendered where you can see how sections within partials are working and how we can deal with the data processor Maybe you can take a look to the other videos um, about data processing and um, special features of Type 3 that we are creating. Next session will be next week. The next session we will do this week will be um, the Type 3 service station. And I will do a, a very long session on Saturday where you can take a look at the refactoring of extensions that we're currently maintaining, like a localization manager, Grid elements, oh no, actually grid elements is already refactored, but um, we have the um, DMM job control, we have the YAC gallery, and we'll take um, some looks into that. So if you're interested in the one of these extensions, please consider sponsoring us. You can do that um, actually with Twitch, but currently we don't have um, the affiliate status because we need to reach 50 followers and to fulfill the criteria, but you can still go to Codos Care codes.care is the actual domain you can go to um, the grid elements manual and you will find several ways how to support us with paypal with um, pat um, patreon with uh, the amazon wish list or be even by buying some of the codes care slas so if you um, found this useful then you should support us and think about how to do it if um, you want to see more come back next week or maybe even to the other session and thanks for watching for today goodbye